Hello, and welcome to Sage Creek High School's Visual and Performing Arts. I'm Mrs. Herrick. And I am Mrs. Burroughs. And we're here to share with you uh, our amazing opportunities at Sage Creek High School. All right, so the Sage Creek High School mission is to inspire students' lifelong appreciation and passion for the arts in an ever-evolving and diverse world. At SAGE, we believe that the cultivation of creative thinking can fuel the ever-increasing need for innovation. We strive to, to prepare students for success by challenging them to think outside the box. We are STEAM-based and interested in fostering curiosity and innovation. So here's how to get a hold of us. Please feel free to reach out with any questions you might have through email or through Instagram. We would love to hear from you. The visual arts courses that we offer at SAGE include Art 1, 2, and 3, Digital Photography 1 and 2, 3D Design, and AP Art History. We instruct with a variety of media and try to offer students a variety of creative opportunities. At SAGE, we encourage our students to document, share, and teach others through their creative process. Here I have two videos I'd like to share, we would like to share with you, that include uh, works that were done quite recently with students in digital media. So we were learning about mandalas and how peaceful they can be um, during this challenging time and students did time-lapse videos of their process on their iPads and they are quite lovely. And we also uh, promote students instructing other students because you can learn so much through, through your process and learning when you're teaching others. So here's a video I'd like to share with you by a student um, about how to edit your photos. So you want to download the app called pick art and when you download it click on drawings and create and click create new then you want to go on your gallery and choose a photo that you want to edit so i have chosen this photo then you want to go to brush size they have on this app they have different brush sizes but i like using the brush size three and then you want to choose the color you want to outline your And it's really cool to have these types of opportunities because students can learn so much through their process of teaching as well as learning from other students. All right, so here um, are some, some things that we do here. Uh, we do go outside the walls of the by offering a lot of field trips and opportunities to present their work in you know, the Festival of the Arts, the San Diego Fair, um, a lot of different things like that. We do have some one-on-one -on -one cohort tutoring. We have a lot of collaborative projects on and off campus, and we present projects um, both through Google Meet, Zoom live instruction, and in-class interaction. Now, uh, Art 1, Art 2, and Art 3, those courses are a little bit different. So just to give you a heads up, uh, Art 1 is the beginning art. Most students that are coming in from eighth grade, uh, they take that class first. In that class, students learn the fundamental um, uh, language and uh, tools and how to create. Um, then after that comes Intermediate Art or Art 2, and followed by um, Advanced Art or Art 3. Now, all the visual arts courses focus on developing visual literacy through the practice of creating, connecting, and presenting, as well as responding to works of art. Students work with a variety of media, and they learn traditional as well as contemporary techniques. Here are some more examples of student work. As mentioned before, we use a wide variety of materials in, in class. So we work with pencils, we work with colored pencils, we work with ink and acrylic paint and oil paint and watercolor and paper. It's really a, a great chance for students to learn how to use a, a, a range of materials. All 
Okay, so we have a really wonderful photography program at Sage Creek High School. We have photo one and two, and photo one is the basis, just kind of fundamentals of digital photography. We offer a really great uh, range of different lenses and DSLR cameras and studio lighting materials. It's a great class, and I think it's wonderful because it allows for a lot of different personalities. The person who wants to kind of edit and be by themselves and put their earbuds in and listen to their own music, and then collaborative, collaborative projects where they can really just work together and have a whole lot of fun. I love this quote by Dorothea Lange, the camera is an instrument that teaches people how to see without a camera and regardless of whatever field you want to go into it's amazing to just be able to think outside the box and see in a creative way so these are just some examples of student work we do a lot of we use the whole entire adobe photoshop um, the whole entire adobe creative suite um, but here's photoshop being used to create um, multiple exposures and we do a lot on the technical aspects of photography, how to you know, really get tack sharp photos and really uh, use the right lens, the right equipment, the right settings. So the technical aspect of photography. And here we, we wanna share with you that we encourage students to participate in, um, in art shows, local art shows and even national art uh, shows or competitions. So one of our students uh, won an award for a, a student jury show at the Museum of Photographic Arts. And so here's here's us with that student. But we also have students participate in the PTSA Reflections Contest, the San Diego uh, County Fair, to name a few. All right, so 3D design is a whole lot of fun. We just get to get our hands in the mud. We get to go and learn how to throw on the wheel and build things out of clay. We use a lot of different materials, but it's very collaborative, it's very experimental, and it's a whole lot of fun. Here are some examples of students using um, power tools to create projects with wood, plaster, paint, cloth, sewing, really anything that's not two-dimensional is all just experimental and fun. And, um, you know, just, if you want to try new things, this is the class for you. So here's um, one of our star students creating a multiple vases off the hump. He's throwing off the wheel. Um, and then another student who's also awesome, he created this out of wood and painted it. Uh, yeah, it's just a lot of fun. This class um, experiments with a lot of different media and materials. There we go. Clay is a big part of this class, but really a lot of students that don't feel like they can draw really flourish in this class. Now, a little bit about art history. Uh, we offer an, a one AP course for VAPA, and that is art history. And for this class, we really, we cover about uh, the nature of art. We cover its uses and meanings um, and how we respond to works of art. We uh, talk about investigation through diverse artistic art traditions and cultures. Um, and really the class um, is meant to, to um, help students with like visual and contextual and comparative analysis. And, you know, when you think about art history, you think of, okay, well, what happened so long ago, but you realize that all these different styles of art and different techniques really apply to the way that we live in our world today. So I have a, a video that the student, uh, Nika, would like to share with you. final words on AP art history. My favorite memory from this class would have to be dressing up as an artwork. That was our final and it was a very fun project. Definitely a change from all the tests and exams from other classes on finals week. Art history has changed my perspective on art. Before taking this class, I didn't really understand art. Going to art museums was boring for me because I didn't understand why the work was so important or what the meaning was behind it. After taking this class, I understand art so much more than I used to. Now looking at artworks, I can understand the meaning behind it. I've always enjoyed looking at art and thinking it was so beautiful, but now I can really understand art through its visual elements, which is a pretty, pretty cool skill to have. <laughs> During this course, I looked forward to learning about different cultures and art. Most art pieces that people know of is the Mona Lisa and artists like Van Gogh and Monet.
All those iconic pieces are European and part of the Western world. Taking this class, I looked forward to learning about different artworks from different cultures, such as African, Asian, Polynesian, Mesoamerican, and Islamic art. I would suggest not procrastinating on note cards and notes if you do take this course. Space out your time throughout the week. Miss um, Herrick makes learning about AP art history so much fun. She always finds a way for us to interact with the art that we are learning about with projects, hands-on activities, and food sometimes. For one of the artworks, we made a Stonehenge with Rice Krispie Treats. This was so cool. We get to go on field trips to art museums as well, which is also really fun. This class was my favorite class I took at Sage Creek for sure. It was a lot of work, but it was definitely worth it. Hi, my name is... So that was a, a sweet um, word from one of our students, but I want to touch on, um, and maybe Ms. Rose wants to elaborate on this too. When you are in eighth grade and you're coming in as, as a freshman to Sage Creek, most likely you'll take um, Art One or Digital Photo One. And then your second year, you'll, you can um, proceed to taking some higher level arts courses like uh, 3D design or Art Two. Um, you could even take AP Art History as a sophomore. You, you probably want to wait a little bit for that. Ms. Rose, you want to elaborate a little bit more? I just want to take your classes. Oh my, <laughs> I'm take your awesome. classes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Ms. Rose and I would like to share this video with you because it relates so much to like what, what has happened in, the, in the, our last year, uh, you know. Yeah. Um, and so, um, one of our goals as arts teachers at SAGE is to help students to feel empowered. So this student, Isabella, made a video of when she felt or how she felt empowered through the arts. Check it out. And then such as these, many people have turned to the arts for comfort and entertainment. However, in my case, I have used the arts to assist local hospitals and medical services in creating necessary supplies that do not necessarily have the funds to acquire. My robotics team was approached by Scripps Hospital in order to produce Prussia face shields for them. I, being one of the few people with 3D printers large enough to accommodate such shields, was directed to create as many as I could and deliver them every weekend. I've been doing this for around three months and have been able to print a little over a thousand usable shields. That's around 11 masks per day, not counting for the printers breaking, shields printing improperly, or other prints being printed. Now this has empowered me as both an artist and a person because it's allowed me to use something I'm good at to help others. I've used my experience with 3D printers to produce important medical supplies that allow healthcare workers to combat COVID-19 while still remaining healthy and safe. Being empowered through the arts means doing something for others, whether that be by directly creating medical supplies to help save lives or indirectly by making artwork that expresses an idea or thought. The most important thing to remember is that art can not only be a method of expression, but also a tool that can impact others in surprising ways. So we have a message for you, and that is um, future Bobcats. Congratulations on your eighth grade graduation, and we cannot wait to see you at SAGE. Take care, be safe, and ask us for any questions you might have, but it's been great talking with you, and we're very excited to share our passion for the arts with you. Okay, bye.